After Univision's chief anchor was escorted from Donald Trump's Iowa news conference, shouting and lecturing Trump all the way, NBC's Casey Hunt asked the Republican frontrunner why Jorge Ramos had been ejected. President Obama has taken some tough questions from Jorge Ramos. Is there a reason why you won't? Because he was out of order. I would take his question in two seconds, but he stood up and started screaming. Trump allowed Ramos to come back for what turned into a heated five-minute debate. You cannot deport 11 million undocumented immigrants. You cannot deny citizenship to the children in this country. You cannot build a night. Why do you say that? You cannot do that. The one thing we're going to start with immediately are the gangs and the real bad ones. And you do agree there are some bad ones. Do you agree with that? <laughs> Trump defended himself the next morning on the Today Show. He stood up and started ranting and raving like a madman, and frankly, he was out of line. Ramos, who declined our invitation for an interview, responded with Megyn Kelly. He tried to silence me, and, um, and in this country, you cannot do that. Can you mm -hmm. understand Trump's side of it, which is, this is not the outlet I want to take these questions from, because their mind is made up about me. He doesn't like uncomfortable questions. It happened with you. It happened with your colleagues at Fox News. He hates it when uh, he's being confronted. Joining us now to analyze Trump's latest skirmishes with the media, Mercedes Schlapp, a columnist for U.S. News, political consultant, and a former Bush White House official. Susan Fericio, chief congressional correspondent for the Washington Examiner. And Juan Williams, Fox News analyst and a columnist for The Hill. Mercedes Viana Schlapp, you're a Cuban-American, some Hispanic journalists, reporting Jorge Ramos, praising him to the skies. What do you make of his conduct? Well, let me just tell you, a majority of Hispanic journalists are applauding Jorge Ramos. What's interesting is, is that the conservative media and the mainstream media both agree that Jorge Ramos was out of line. And then you have on the other side, the Spanish language media basically saying, wait a second, they literally showed the viral video of Jorge Ramos and the individual saying, get out of my country. So it was a very unfair, uh, I would say, coverage on the Spanish language media I side. I wish I could things. pronounce it like that. <laughs> but what does Mercedes Viana say about Jorge Ramos and what he did at that Well, it was Surely, he was, I find that he was out of line in the sense that, first of all, he dominated the press conference. He became the show. It was a very calculated move by Jorge Ramos to get his point across that he was going to be very uh, adamant and an advocate on this issue on immigration, and he was going to confront uh, Trump on it, regardless of, of was what... Was it unprofessional? What, what, I would say absolutely. I think on that part it was. Well, and journalists want to be seen as tough when they're questioning politicians, but if you're interrupting and then you keep shouting and you won't sit down... Uh, is that tough? Yeah, it may even cross the line, but I would remind Mercedes, I'd remind you, Howie, because you had a terrific piece this week about this issue. Uh, and, you know, it was at foxnews.com for people, by the way, who want to read it. But, the, you know, if you think back, uh, Helen Thomas in the White House press room, she could be obnoxious at times. Oh, I remember. You remember uh, do you remember um, Sam Donaldson? Sam Donaldson used to stand up and shout at the president, shout at Reagan all the time. Okay, but there's a difference between shouting at presidents when they're walking to the helicopter or it's kind of a scrum, but you're having a news conference where somebody's calling in this one and that one, and then you jump in, and then you don't stop talking, and then you're not really asking a question, but you're kind of lecturing the candidate. Well, here's that, the thing. That doesn't upset you? This, it, let me just say, first of all, Jorge Ramos is no reporter, so let's not equate him with a reporter. He is the Walter Cronkite of Spanish language media in this country country. He is the star journalist, and he has a certain weight on issues of immigration, specifically when he says that to his community this amounts right. to racism, discrimination, but, and oppression. But Juan, he jumps in there all the time, and really, what they do in, on Univision is advocacy journalism. It is very clear that Jorge Ramos, when he gets on air, it's very much an opinion on where he stands on immigration. And like how he said, I mean, he went on a tirade with Trump, and he's been, he's made it a point that he basically says on issues of racial discrimination, he believes that journalism should have a point of view, and they should be very vocal about it. I don't know why that's a problem. My colleagues here at Fox News, oftentimes, especially our primetime anchors, have a point of view, and I've seen them go to interview President Obama and be insistent, though. interrupting, and, and make well, their point. That's different. 
I don't think Sean Hannity is. He's, he's a, a host of a TV show. He's an but opinion I, journalist. He's not sitting in an, the audience of a press conference asking questions the way Jorge Ramos was, and he was also interrupting Jorge Ramos, other reporters. Well, to it's get an, his it's not like a number of journalists having questioned Trump aggressively on immigration, and I think it was shrewd of Donald Trump to bring him back and then have a sure. debate because he didn't it want was. the next day's headline to be reporter booted out. But but it was the next day's was. headline. And okay, that's part you're of right, the but at least there was. He didn't completely banish him. Okay, but. When Trump gets into with Jorge Ramos, when he calls out a CNN reporter for asking a question about protesters in an event, he says, well, CNN hasn't reported accurately on me. When he continues to swipe at Fox News over debate questions, does all this help Donald Trump? Yes, because Why? if you look at the, what the public thinks of the media right now, oh, right. We, we're, our ratings are down there with the, with the ratings of people in Congress. You know, we're, we're approaching really bottom of the barrel levels here. So the more he swipes at Congress, I think voters like that. I think people, or, I mean, at, at the media, I think we Look at the reaction on Twitter when uh, when he got the tough questions from Megyn Kelly. You saw a lot of backlash. People were saying, hey, what's Fox News doing asking these tough questions of Donald Trump? People really, for some reason, took offense to the fact that these journalists were trying to ask really tough questions because they don't like reporters and they think we have treated these candidates unfairly over the past few years. Just to be clear, Jorge Ramos is the chief anchor of Univision. That's right. Chief news anchor, which is the largest Spanish language network in the That's country. Right. And so he clearly has opinions on this issue, but he's not paid to go and disrupt events. I mean, I thought at times he seemed like a heckler. Actually, I have to like say, a heckler. I was shocked because um, knowing uh, Jorge Ramos, I worked with him during the Bush administration. He would be the reporter out of Univision that we would say, let's have the interview with President Bush because mm -hmm. he was considered pretty fair on these questions. With President Obama, he was tough with President Obama on immigration. He's taken it to a whole new different level with Trump. This is personal for, for Jorge Ramos. And he, really, you could tell in his tone, you can tell in the way that he tries to ask these questions that right, right now it has become uh, like a moral crusade for Jorge Ramos. And he is making it very clear to the Latinos who are watching his show that Donald well, Trump is bad. Well, didn't Walter Cronkite Latinos. say something about Vietnam? I believe that Walter Cronkite, who was the anchor, had something to say, and people to, said, gosh, yeah. if you've lost Walter Cronkite, maybe you've lost the okay, country. Just to clarify, if you've lost Jorge Ramos, maybe you've lost the Hispanic community. Just to clarify, Walter Cronkite, uh, 1968, I believe, went on a reporting trip to Vietnam and came back and said it looked like the U.S. was losing the war. Right. He was not, you know, raving his arms and interrupting people. All right, let's take a look at another Donald Trump rally where he took on the New York Times. In fact, he stood up and read from a Times article about how the Hispanic media are treating the Donald. Take a look. Ricardo Sanchez, known as El Mandrel, on his Spanish drive-time radio show in Los Angeles, has taken to calling Donald J. Trump El Hombre del Pelequin. In other words, the man of the toupee. This is on the front page of the New York Times. I don't wear a toupee. It's my hair. I swear. Is it mine? Look. It is. It is. <laughs> Say it, please. Yes, I believe it is. Thank you. <laughs> Susan, how's that yeah. for pushing back okay. against the New York Times? I'll tell you, and he keeps doing these things where he's grabbing the spotlight with these moments at these press conferences, at these rallies. I mean, who does that? Have someone in the <laughs> audience come up and see if their hair is real. I mean, that, look at the play that got. And, and I, I do think that's really hitting back. It's, hey, the New York Times says my hair isn't real. Why don't you come up here and look at my hair and tell me, is the New York Times right or wrong? Yeah. Again, another accurate slap at the media. And Trump, what, what, the, the Times to it, it, you know, in fairness, was quoting a Hispanic right. radio host, and he went on to read more from that article. But Juan, since you seem uh, to feel that Jorge Ramos was uh, maybe not as out of line as a lot of other critics say, yeah. let's go back to a news conference in which President Obama was interrupted by a reporter for the Daily Caller. It is the right thing to do. Excuse me, sir. I, I, it's not time for questions, sir. I, I, not while I'm speaking. And the answer to your question, sir. And the next time I prefer you let me finish my statements before you ask that. So were you more upset about what Neil Monroe, the, Neil Monroe, the Daily Caller, did than you were about what Jorge did? By far. I mean, clearly the president was speaking. I mean, it, it, he was Trump reading was an opening middle. statement. I'm he sorry? was reading an opening statement. Yeah, so yeah. He's, he's, he's speaking. And so what you saw, I think, with Donald Trump was Donald Trump was in the middle of a press conference. And let me just give you a little background here very quickly, which is that Jorge Ramos had requested 
interviews with Donald Trump. Donald Trump had not responded. Donald Trump had put his phone number, I believe, yes, on the internet. That's correct. So there had been something of a little static that you guys haven't oh, mentioned here. There, there was a little it, history here. But... Division lawsuit. We, we yes, five hundred million yes, dollars. Right. Five hundred million right. dollars. Thank you for very those much. Who lost track here by Donald Trump <laughs> well, against Univision? But here right. is a fascinating uh, opinion piece on the Univision website by Jorge Ramos's longtime co-anchor Marina Elena. Salinas, and let's put it up on the screen, talking about Trump. His words are tantamount to a declaration of war against a major sector of American society. As in any war, aggression on Hispanic immigrants raises our nationalism and pride. Like Jorge has done in the past when there is injustice, intolerance, or corruption, he was not going to stay silent. He went to Donald Trump's press conference with a clear mission. Question, denounce and expose him. And since you were nice enough to translate that, Mercy, what do you think of that? Well, again, I think it's very strong words from Maria Elena Salinas. I think we have to understand that this is an incredibly emotional topic for the Latinos. They are taking it, both Maria Elena, Univision, Jorge Ramos, it's personal for them. It's a moral, again, as I said, moral crusade for Hispanics. It's an issue that they want to take on and they want to take Trump down. If she it. says he went there to denounce and expose him, well, that doesn't sound like journalism to me. Oh, it's not like journalism to me. It sounds like opinion journalism. I think that's your legitimate point. It sounds but, like activism. Exactly. Well, no, it's wait a second. Is. Remember, <laughs> Donald Trump said rapists, thieves. That's who's. That's who these immigrants are being sent into the country. Ramos, who is a Mexican American, might take offense. But don't you have Howie? to take per the personal part out of it, Juan? Take the personal part out like, of it. Like you know, like where is the objective, unbiased journalism? You're saying that for him that doesn't well, I, exist. Where, you said, most, I don't believe that Spanish most Mexicans who are cast. coming in here are rapists and thieves. So well, that's I, the objective. We, I don't fact. either. Okay, that's so true. I'm saying so but he challenged if you're the candidate. A newscaster on a major Spanish network. You believe yes. that it's okay for him to? I think in this instance when. You you just heard that uh, his co-anchor said this is a matter of injustice, discrimination, bias, perpetrating characters and stereotypes. I think he would be he would be negligent as a major voice in his community if he did not speak with some passion. All right, got to call the whistle here, guys. Get a break in.